Bismillah. Bismillah wa rahman rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wa salatu wa salam wa ala Muhammadin wa ala ali wa sahabi ajamain. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to our Triple IT Far East Monthly Community Development uh, Webinar. And uh, today, uh, we are very glad that uh, our beloved Ustad Mamun Awzami will be uh, the speaker for today's topic on time and life management. Our uh, Ustad need no uh, introduction, but in very brief, Ustad Mamun is the international NGO management consultant for Triple IT. He has over 30 years of international training and development experience. He is an accredited Adua Action Centered Leadership Trainer. So he has been very active uh, in different parts of the world. Uh, and he visited Hong Kong in 2019, conducted a very successful uh, training program for us. And uh, since then, he has been helping us in conducting um, online uh, webinar monthly. And uh, may Allah bless his effort. And uh, without you, maybe I leave the mic uh, to him uh, to, to conduct the session today. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. My dear brothers and I don't know whether there is any sister so if there is sister uh, I say to all of you السلام عليكم. عليكم السلام. السلام. This topic is so important uh, in uh, for Muslims and Muslim NGO leaders. Because we are into management of NGOs and leadership of NGOs. And for that purpose, all the topics has been geared to leadership uh, development. And time and life management, because time provides life. Life is combination of time. So like I was saying that I was 70 in February, that means that time has been my life. So everyone has this uh, time in life. And we'll talk about that but before then before actually i present i would like uh, our um, our brothers uh, and if there is any sister all the audience i would like to learn from them how do they manage time in their life how do they manage time and in my i will just show you what i'm going to um, there are these are the nine i will cover so i would like uh, to start with our brother uh, Azhar to share his uh, time and life uh, ex management experience um, and how does our brother Azhar manage his time. He's been uh, uh, busy and after that I would like to uh, also learn from Dr. Anwar al uh, brother from also he's in Philippines. But he's a Bangladeshi brother, a university teacher in uh, Manila, I think. So, Brother Azhar, if you would like to share uh, the way you uh, manage your time. Inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, just simply, I'd like to share, uh, Stad. Yes. Just uh, when uh, when I manage my time, I, I, uh, I just simply put what is more important from uh, priority down to less priority. That's uh, basically how I manage my time. And if there is some uh, things that need to be included in between, so I make sure that it's not going to affect the priority that I have uh, prior. So there is some flexibility in between, but that flexibility has to be, you know, it has it has to be flexible somehow, but priority remains priority. Uh, you know, it's how basically I uh, try to manage time. And uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, I think in our line of work, in humanitarian works, uh, 
uh, this is very important because sometimes we have some visitors that needs to accommodate, need to be accompanied, uh, especially on the ground, where sometimes there are some uh, tragic, you know, calamities that need to respond urgently. So these uh, these things um, has to be need to have some flexibility, but our overall goal we make sure that we need and then every things we do need to contribute to our overall goal. So I, I think that's something uh, I could share from our end. Thank Allah for for allowing us to share. Very nice, very nice. Actually, this this question of priority, and I will address that in a, uh, and I will give some tools for us. Uh, to to plan the priorities and it is important point that you say that if we have the priorities priority basis i will also talk about inshallah but this is a very important point you make that we have to have priorities if we have important priorities in front of us and we get involved with the mundane things that are, are not as important then we actually undermine the important things and therefore not achieve bigger goals that we can uh, dr anwar ludud if you would like to share yes are you there if not i would ask uh, brother jamshed from sri lanka to share how do you manage your time Yes, sir. Thank you for your question. And times, uh, I heard one proverbs uh, from our lesson uh, from the school service book. Uh, time is gold. Time is gold. But in my point of view, time is uh, more than precious gold because time is past is past. But gold is in edible. So uh, we have to arrange and think and work the plan, plan the work. Work the plan, right. plan the, the time. It says the time and organization and uh, the things that we have to do is in time. Whatever time, what we have to do. So the time management in our life personally or professionally and also so like um, brother azhar he was saying that we manage time by uh, deciding what is our priority so how do you do that right, yes. uh, the, uh, it depends on the important uh, works i mean the priority Very good. should go forward this is this is all, uh, you have also said another very important point that priority, but priority based on importance. Yes. What is more important and what is less important? And we'll I'll talk about that. Very good point. Uh, yeah, in my case, uh, time is uh, personally. Yes. Personally, uh, we have uh, many works. Personally, or uh, in working places, and also other social activities. Uh, when we engage uh, in the all kinds of words, uh, actually the time is not enough for us. Right. So in this uh, in this in this okay, in this time, uh, we have to give priority. What is important for uh, uh, better important uh, most of important uh, things. That's indicates the, the priority given uh, for what the time uh, the priority should be given. So it should right. be it, it should be very. Uh, useful and uh, people uh, can get something from uh, uh, from this uh, kind of activity. That's why uh, the priority should be given in the works of debate. Very good. So we have two key words spoken by two of the brothers. One is you have to decide your priority. And now the priorities basis is the word important that you have spoken. So this is how, uh, um, out of because we have to be productive, uh, the 24 hours that we have will pass every day without, sometimes we have no uh, results because we did not prioritize according to importance. Very good. Thank you very much. Let's see 
if um, Brother Abu Bakr would like to share something. I think um, as I agree that we need to plan our work accordingly and give prioritization. But sometimes there will be some conflicting uh, demand from us. For example, I give you just example. Uh, for example, at three o'clock, I want to attend your seminar because I think it is important. But at the same time, there's some uh, Dawa work happen in Kowloon Mosque. So, okay. so we cannot do both. So what I do with some prioritization because uh, we can have only one session once a month for your seminar. So I choose to attend your seminar instead of go to Kowloon Mosque. <laughs> Mashallah. This is uh, another very key important point you said. When there is clash of uh, same time, two events, you make a choice. Mm. And the choice shows your priority. Mm. So this is how. So in managing time, we need to look at priority, the importance, and the choice we are forced to make because we can't be in two places and in two events. Therefore, we join one and then contribute and get enriched in the same program. Thank you very much. Very, uh, very succinct points. Uh, is Dr. Anwar Lodud available to share? Are you there? If not, let's see Ahmed Lubis. Brother Ahmed Lubis, would you like to share how you manage time? Yeah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, yeah, uh, more or less our the same with the, the others uh, uh, this uh, to, should be the prioritizing of your programs uh, of course you plan you have to plan for it every day uh, and then you have you make pro, uh, pro priority uh, and then uh, sometimes yeah if you have a separate because uh, uh, sometimes yeah you cannot avoid uh, to have a class so you need to think about which one is uh, uh, useful, more useful uh, uh, for you. I think that's the thing to do. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Anwar Lod. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. How do you manage time? Yes, yes. I, what I used to do actually, I arranged my daily activities uh, according with the sala sala time. Most of the time, I schedule with the Zuhor, Asar, Maghrib. Because in uh, Philippines, we have very few masjid or very few areas where we can pray. So I used to, you know, uh, uh, set my schedule uh, <laughs> with the prayer times, like uh, Zuhor, where shall I go? Where shall I pray? Then what about the Asar? And I arrange my schedule with the prayer times, Alhamdulillah. And I think it's uh, easy. And uh, it's beneficial for us if we just prioritize the prayer times, the five times salah, and if we arrange our uh, daily routine on it, uh, it will be smooth and uh, com most comfortable for me. This is beautiful thing that you say, because uh, I know I know that there, uh, there is something called if you tell prayer that I have work, or if you tell work that I have prayer, that also shows our priority. If the prayer is in front of you and the, you, you go to the masjid, so in other words, if the prayer is not just pillar of Islam, a pillar of my time management. But, yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's what I, I, I try to follow actually. Yeah, this I, is a fundamental point you say that as Muslim, prayer would be pillar, you don't move it to fit, uh, to, to be fitted in flexible time. The work Prayer is, is, is to be valued and prioritized. The words, the prayer is important, prayer is priority, and uh, therefore, prayer in fact and work around it, which is fundamental. Uh, Muslim quality and mu uh, Muslim leaders should be, uh, should be able to show this, uh, demonstrate this quality that you have just talked about. Really important point. So, so far, we have had uh, quite a number of important points uh, from different uh, brothers. Is there anybody else? Brother Arnalin Dullah and Brother Asra Jubail. 
who wants to share uh, time management, then I will uh, ask later on, Brother Rabiul Hassan. Uh, so, Brother, Brother Annalyn Dullah, would you like to share uh, how you manage time? Okay, maybe uh, he's just popped out, brother Asra. Is it well, sister Asra? Sister, uh, both are uh, sister Anne and uh, Asra. Both of them are sister from Philippines. Okay, mashallah. I would like to know the sisters. I have uh, one slide about uh, the mothers being a, a great example of time management, and I will talk about that. Uh, so, sister Asra and sister Arnalin from Philippines. Would you like to share with Sister Asra first? Would you like to share how you manage time? Sister Annalyn, okay, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hi, it is nice to see you again, uh, Stad. I am the I am the coordinator for TBF, actually. Mashallah, mashallah. <laughs> And uh, Asar has been trying to bring me to Philippines. It hasn't been possible. So, inshallah, we'll see when when I can come. It, it has been, I have not been to Philippines. So, uh, tell us about how you manage your time. Um, inshallah. So, in my in my case, uh, Ustad, it's it's very different because um, as a working uh, a working lady here in the Philippines, it's very hard, especially when you are in Metro Manila, to manage your time if you have a lot of things to do, especially in the office. But in my case, I I, I usually take note of my daily activities. No, uh, in our office we have this uh, to do list. No, in my case, I I usually list all my things that I need to finish for the day so that uh, I will not be able to miss any task important for the day. yes to do list for the day so um, aside from from other activities that's not that important for me I usually take down notes because uh, it's our practice in the office to list all the activity that I need to finish especially those important things that I need to urgently finish it no so uh, that's how I that's how I, I manage my time. So in our for, for, but for for weekends usually I I prioritize my rest because for the whole week we are very busy doing some work. So I make sure that at the weekend I have some rest so that for the upcoming week I can manage my time more and do more for our work. So that's Excellent. how you I have, do it. You have given. Uh two very key words like the everyone else. You said urgent things and you said day task list. Very important yes. uh, contribution, mashallah. And uh, what about Sister Asra? Asra? Sister Asra? Would you like to um, share? Okay, Brother uh, SM Rabiul Hassan, would you like to share please? How do you manage time? If Sister Asra is ready, please unmute and uh, you speak first. Brother Rabiul Hassan, are you there? Sister Asra, are you there? Okay. Let's see if I have any other a uh, person who can share. Okay, there is a uh, tweet phone sang. Would you like to share how you manage time? Okay, you will have an, uh, another chance after uh, my presentation uh, because it's one and a half hour program and half an hour is my presentation and one hour is sharing of experience and learning because everyone has something to teach and everyone has something to learn. So we learn from each other. And uh, let me start uh, my presentation now. So you can see, I started with, th there are nine sections, quote from Quran Hadith, quote from global scholars, and then Islamic uh, perspective on time and life. Uh, then I go into four categories of time management, personal time, 
organizational time, professional time, social time, and how to balance the four types and some action tips. Okay, here is Quran. As you know, time management cannot be considered by a Muslim without Surah Al-Asr. And this is the most important thing And Surah Al-Asr. I will just uh, mention it now, but uh, I have something more to say in another slide. So this is Surah Al-Asr. Three verses, but very focused, very succinct, very kind of uh, Zoom words. This is Likulli Ajalin Kitab. Everything has a time frame. So Ajal means a, a limited time. Kitabun means it has been prescribed, it has been written, it has been confirmed. For everything in, in dunya, Allah has, this is from Quran again. And this is about the purpose of creating human beings and jinn. That they will worship means they will obey Allah. Li'abudun comes from the word abd. Abd means slave. It is not part-time or full-time, it's lifetime. So this is something to reflect on. Are we doing things that are uh, to be done by uh, believers? This is very in interesting. Again, Quran. That people are close to the end and they are still in ghafla, means heedless. They are, uh, they are not focused on this. They are so heedless. And they are also turning away from the real thing, the real life issues, which is that we are going to die and that we cannot come back and fix things. So it is better uh, that we are smart and prepare for the death and what happens after. So this is very important for us uh, to look at. This is another that there is no delay. When the time comes, meaning there, there is no delay, whatever time, the end time has come, that will be no extension. And there is another verse I will also uh, mention. This is about hadith after Quran. You can see that in, in Tirmizi that there are five things they have to account for. Life, youth, income, expenditure, and knowledge practice. So these are the five. How the life was spent, how the youth was spent, how income was earned, how it was spent and how much knowledge and practice we had. Okay, another hadith. Every day, angel, angels call out to us, son of Adam, I am a new day and I witness your actions. So make the best out of me because I will never come back till the day of judgment. So every day, a new angel will come and address us. So if we feel it, if we experience it, if we spiritually, uh, feel the reality then we will be preparing to use our time as many of the uh, brothers and sisters shared beautifully that how time has to be managed that means productive that means time leads to some actions that produce results another hadith there are two blessings that people ignore or people lose because they don't use it. If we don't use it, we lose it. Health and free time. So a lot of people damage health by earning income and then spend the income to restore health, which they cannot do. The free time is gone. And when they are busy, they are so busy, they don't have any more free time. So during free time, they, want, they could have done things that they now want to do, but they don't have time. There is a hadith that be in this world as if you are a stranger or traveler. A stranger doesn't stay. A traveler doesn't stay. They just uh, pause for a minute. And then there is also a hadith uh, uh, continues that if you survive till evening, don't expect to be alive in the morning because we don't know when we are going to die. Some people die without any uh, notice. Not just accident, just heart stop. 
Even people without any heart problems, they can die because death has been prescribed by Allah. The time will not be extended as I will uh, make reference again. Here, Allah is pleased with the deed which is done with regularity and no matter how small it is. It's, uh, it's very small. Khairul umuri adwamuhu. The best of deeds are those that are done regularly, even small. So small things every day. If we do, let's say, uh, forgive people, uh, this is one thing. If we are angry, we control anger. This is another thing. If we have time, we say, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. These are small things, but they add up. This is, that means the essence of time management is to use little, little time that we have with little, little good deeds that will accumulate and become big. Let's look at some global scholars. Ibn al-Qayyim said, wasting time is worse than death because death separates us from this world. But wasting time separates us from Allah. Subhanallah, look at that. Small, a few words, but deep meaning. That wasting time separates us from Allah because we forget Allah. We forget our reality of life that we are moving towards Qabr. So therefore we are disconnected from Allah. But death is disconnection from this world, not with, from Allah. So which one is more important? Disconnection with this world or disconnection with Allah? That's the message that he is giving. This is another message, and I could not find who is the speaker, but it is so important. When we are tempted to sin, we need to remember that the death is in front of us, and Allah is watching us, and angels are recording us. Death is in front of us, Allah is watching us, angels are recording us. So these are the three things that the scholar said. We, if we are feeling like committing a sin, then think about that we are going to die and this is being recorded and Allah is watching. This is another very important thing. We go to prayer, it is attendance, but Allah is actually not looking for attendance only, but also attention, meaning connect, connection with Allah. Not just uh, physical attendance, but spiritual and emotional and intellectual attention connection okay this is uh, benjamin franklin a scholar uh, he said if you love life don't don't squander time because that is what life is all about life is time this is what he's saying so don't waste time find wastage in time and utilize it this is another wonderful thing Life teaches us to make good use of time and time teaches us for the value of life. So life teaches us time and time teaches us life. So both have teachings for each other. Life and time are intertwined because life is full, is, com is composed of only time. So it's a life journey, but time every day, day and night moving, meaning we are moving towards Qabr. Islamic perspective, I said the Surah Al-Asr, I will discuss more. There are four conditions to utilize time. Best use of time is four conditions. Otherwise, we are at a loss. Iman and good deeds. So these two are personal. Promoting truth and promoting patience is social with other people. So faith and good deeds are with me personally. So you have personal, just myself and Allah. The other is myself and other people for Allah. So these are the uh, four items in two categories. Also Allah says, Surah Al-Asr, everybody knows. This second one is, Inna salata kanat ala al-mu'minina kitaba mawquta. This is in Surah An-Nisa, verse 103. It's talking about prayers have been prescribed at set times. So they are like... Uh, Dr. Abdul Wadud was saying the prayer is to be the pillars of life. Everything else should fit around it. Not that the prayer is moved from place to place, time to time, but the prayer should be the pillar. So if we don't move prayers, we move other work. 
That's the way our priority is actually demonstrated. We may say prayer is very important for me, but when I see that prayer time has arrived and I ignore that and I do something else, that something else has become uh, the prayer value. So prayer has become less important than that some other things. Yet prayer is the distinction between Muslims and non-Muslims according to Prophet Also Allah says, that's verse six, uh, Surah 69, verse 11. This is saying that when the time of death comes, there will be no extension of time. So when the ajal means the end time, the appointed time has come to end life, there will be no extension. So this is another uh, reference in terms of time. Let's say here I have uh, some questions for us to reflect on with heart and mind. As you see, number one, do we realize the meaning of time on life? How much do we value our time and our life, therefore? How serious are we to utilize time and life? Why we feel lazy and lethargic and lose time, waste time? Why? We should check. Why it happens? What can we learn from the past loss of time? We lost men a lot of time. So are we learning from the past loss of time and then make up for it? Do we help others to gain praise or paradise? You see, sometimes we help others because they praise us or others watching praise us. Is that our motive or paradise is motive? So that's something is a matter of ikhlas. So we need to reflect on, if we do it for praise, we get nothing from Allah. This is well established in hadith. We get nothing from Allah because we didn't do it for Allah. We didn't do it for pleasure of Allah and paradise. If we, get, if we are focused on getting praise from people, Surah uh, Insan or Surah Dahar says uh, that uh, We are feeding you for the sake of Allah. We don't want from you any return for our favor, nor even thank you. And if we do something for someone and they don't say thank you, we feel hurt, we feel un unhappy. That means we are actually doing for that purpose, not for Allah. For Allah, Allah will give us more thanks and more rewards. So we should be move, moving, we should be doing, helping others for Pleasure of Allah and paradise. So we need to ask, what motivates us to do good and stop bad? Because doing good and stopping bad is a faith issue, is a life meaningful issue. What is the motivation for us to do good and to stop bad? That's something we need to check out. Again, it's an ikhlas issue, the purpose issue, the motivation issue. Then do we really have a burning desire to do good? If we just do uh, good, a kind of, in a casual way or a burning desire way, they are not the same quality. So burning desire to do good and burning desire to stop bad, those are Amr bil Maruf and Nahyan al Munkar. According to Quran, Amr bil Maruf, Nahyan al Munkar, everyone has a duty on those two issues. And finally, what legacy we want to leave before death in terms of doing good? What legacy? Some people are humble. And they have uh, uh, many things not to be humble, but they are humble because their faith is strong. Some people help others and they never expect even thank you. That's the legacy. So we want to check what legacy we have. Okay. Now, in the Western countries, they say time is money. But I say time is life. And let's see another set of questions. And then conclusion, do we need to be more organized? So that means it's a question of being organized. Do we want to be more productive? Do I get very busy but achieve little? Meaning we do many activities, but there's no result. Do we waste a lot of time on silly things, unimportant things? And one uh, or two brothers and sisters said, I choose important things first. Okay. Do we procrastinate and delay action? Meaning, I, do, I can't decide what to do. I do, I, I do not know. I hesitate. And therefore, action is delayed. 
time is wasted. Do we try to earn money with time? So are we measuring time with money or time with productivity, time with legacy, time with end result, time with reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And last question, can we take the money that we are so focused on with time, the money and wealth, can we take it to the grave? We cannot. We just leave them. So let's say what makes life 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. That's what makes life. But if we have faith, I have a meaning of life. Light inside fires energy. If we have faith, we have a light inside that fires energy to gain both worlds. So life is light inside fires energy. Okay, now four types of types of time in life. Personal time. Personal time means things that I have to do myself. If I eat, nobody can eat for me. If I sleep, nobody can sleep for me. Nobody can learn for me. Nobody can teach. Yeah. Well, nobody can, can do dawah for me. So these are personal things that I must do myself. This is personal time. Okay. Social time is when I spend time with family, relatives, friends, and Islamic organizations where the friends, most of the friends are. So this is social time, meaning time with others, time with myself, time with others. And then professional time is um, our work or business or study that will lead to earning a living. And then organization time is when we serve the community free to please Allah. So personal, social, professional, organizational. Those are the four categories of time I use to analyze how I have achieved. And I will uh, give you some tools. Let's look at each of those four. Uh, each one has a slide. So let's say personal time, I decide and implement my life goals. I eat, drink, sleep, bath, toilet, etc., to survive. I read, reflect, and write my thoughts. I build a private relationship with Allah. This is all personal. Explore my talents and bring them out and review, revise, and reform my life with a purpose. Review, revise, and reform with a purpose. So these are three R's in personal time management. Social time that I do for others or with others. Love and care for the family as a divine duty. Now, if it is I do as divine duty, the Prophet ﷺ said, if I kiss my child for every kiss, Allah will give a reward. See. If I love without thinking Allah, then we get love in dunya, but nothing in akhirah. But if we do it as a divine role, then we get rewarded in both places. Then build strong relationship with relatives. Just because I disagree, that doesn't, shouldn't stop me from building strong relationship. If you look at my hand, their five fingers are different. But that's why they are powerful when they are, the, the fist is made. So that's why it's complementary, strengthening each other. That's the most important thing in, in relationship. Building caring relationship with neighbors because neighbors have rights and Prophet Islam explained quite strongly and repeatedly that we have to have be good with neighbors. We need to display respect and affection for humanity at large because we have been chosen to serve humanity. Kuntum khaira ummatin nas. And again, in that service, we, Allah says that Muruna bil munkar, the promoting good and preventing bad is part of that, of service. Then there is help those in need. I have to help those who need it. Help with my money, help with my time, help with my advice, whatever help is needed, the comfort and reassurance. All these are helping others. Spending time, money, and energy for others. This is how we leave a legacy. So I have to motivate myself to do all these for Allah alone, not for praise, but for paradise. Let's look at professional time. I do the job, but I have to do it sincerely and with competence, meaning knowledge and skills. If I don't do it, then I'm not doing the job right, and Allah will catch us for cheating. Because we have a contract of our time and know-how to be used by the uh, 
office or factory or business where I'm working and then do the work, uh, work to earn halal income and reward. So make the income halal by doing the job sincerely and with competence. Do the duties with efficiency. Efficiency means smooth operation, systematic way of doing things, not just haphazard way, disorganized way. The organized way is efficient way. Then do the task with effective, with effectiveness. It should be not effectively. With the, with the task, do the tasks effectively for results, meaning we need to see that the results are coming. That's effective. Efficiency is smooth uh, process and effectiveness is good, uh, the right result. So this is where the two di differ. Efficiency is the smooth process and effectiveness is product, the end result. Then we need to upgrade to achieve quality and quantity. So we need to upgrade our professional time so that we can achieve quality and quantity. Do all these to leave a legacy for others to be inspired and uphold the contracted duties with integrity. So when we have a contract, a job contract, then we have to hold on, uphold that contract, meaning deliver that contract and not compromise on that contract. Integrity is no compromise, no insincerity, no shortcuts, no uh, cheating. Okay, let's look at the community time that I call it organizational time because we are all involved in Islamic Dawah organizations and Islamic NGOs. So everybody is involved like that. So first accept that helping people is our faith in action. In other words, if we don't help, then we are actually not doing according to our faith. So we are actually fading the faith. So it is a duty in faith to help others, help each other. So we need, what do we need? We need to have interest in it. Get involved with an Islamic group, any group that I like, and then get, take initiative to do something. Take, they initiate task, okay? Interest, involvement, initiative. Then if that is the case, then we join an Islamic organization to perform some tasks to, to, to help them uh, achieve results. So we need all Muslims should join an Islamic organization. If there isn't any in your area, you should form one. Then learn from organizational activities and develop yourself. This is the way we grow. Let's say, for example, I couldn't speak in front of five people. Now, the highest number of people I've spoken to in India was 20,000. So this is something the organizational involvement will help us to grow and then give speeches. So because of organizational opportunities that I used, that I can speak Urdu, English, and Bangla in uh, public speech, okay? I can also uh, converse in Arabic, but not give speech. Then I prove my commitment that I care for humanity, a faith commitment that I care for humanity. So this I have to prove by giving time in Islamic organizations for the community welfare. So that means specifically helping the poor, helping the needy, helping the helpless and vulnerable. And then serve them purely to get reward from Allah alone, not from these people. So that's the organizational time that we do purely for Allah. The, the professional task, we also gain reward from Allah if we do it honestly and with competence. And to please Allah and to earn halal living, which is wajib on men, not for women. Women is nafil, optional. Men, it's wajib. Let's look at how we balance. This is something that uh, you have spoken, but it is in a structure. Stephen Covey prepared this management structure, time management matrix. You can see some, number one is urgent and important. So it is the top priority that we should give what is urgent and important. What is important but not urgent, we need to plan. Okay, so let's say in six months later, my child has an examination, which is important but not urgent. Urgent means it has to be done now. Like urgent is crisis, urgent is deadlines, urgent is critical meeting, urgent is for salah. Okay. Then there is not important but urgent. 
like interruption people just come or may, there is a telephone call somebody at the door or a lot of junk emails or uh, social uh, media that they are not important but they are urgent because whatsapp messages for example i get something like 500 messages a day in whatsapp so no, 90% of them are not urgent and not important either so also some meetings become uh, too long because everybody is saying everything outside the agenda some projects may be urgent but not important for me and also nawafil prayer is urgent but not important it is urgent because every prayer i have i can do nawafil turaka na, uh, nafil prayers and then there are some things that are neither urgent nor important and i will i will explain more so you can see meaningless issues surfing the net gossiping copy coffee, coffee break wasting time and things like that okay same thing i i describe in another that is urgent and important urgent and important means do it do it now if it is important but not urgent you decide and schedule a time for it if it is urgent but not important you don't need to do it yourself because it's not important so you delegate and then not urgent and not important you delete so it's do it decide it delegate it and delete it another way of saying it is that do it date it put a date when you will do it so it may be if, if it is children's exam then i can put uh, many dates every week some time allocated to it or if i have to make a presentation as i do then what i do is i have three weeks so i just make appointment for the task not the people appointment so i allocate one hour two hours uh, at dates that i can do it so that i can build up to it so i i, I can be ready like i this presentation was prepared so i date it when i do it i use google diary and i book time when i i have no commitment so i book time so i date it so do it urgent and important do it not urgent but important is dated not important but urgent delegate it somebody at the door knocking you can say to your son please see who is the, who it is you don't have to go if it is not urgent and not important delete it so do it date it delegate it delete it these are the four categories of time management if we are conscious then this is how we will do it number 1 would be top priority and number 2 second number 3 and number 4 basically unless it is uh, relevant uh, somebody is knocking at the door we don't need to uh, do it because we have delegated it and some people spend a lot of time a lot of time uh, on social media that's actually we need to delete much of it only keep let's say in facebook i i spend something like 1 hour a week sometimes less and i don't upload any picture i have been on facebook maybe 20 years i have not uploaded a single picture why should i uh, just uh, put pictures in there for for nothing some people use just some silly matters that today i have eaten this i have cooked this this is daily matter so okay now i have also explained do it now means emergencies deadlines last minute preparations uh, uh, disasters that uh, brother as had talked about man made or natural disasters uh, dealing with conflict sometimes violent conflict we have to do it now and this is the list of do it now items and then dated items important task for home or for work learning and development for the family professional development update my knowledge and skills exercise for health and well being so i have to date it and many others i've mentioned so everything i mentioned is around eight items delegated phone call or doorbell i mean uh, messages that come some shopping you don't have to do shopping every time somebody else can do it in fact uh, in uk we can just go online and order it and it's delivered at home so uh, a lot of popular social activities parties dinner parties and they spend a lot of time 4 5 hours and usually when i was in jeddah i and a, a number of families would go to the seaside and spend 5 6 hours i said sorry i can't spend so much time like that so i will if 
Uh, they are all my friends, but they want to spend that time. So I say, okay, what time are you having dinner? I will spend two hours there and come back. Have dinner, have prayer with them, and then come back. So like that. So this is uh, things that can be delegated. And this is what to be deleted. Excessive social media. Uh, excessive TV and internet browsing. And sometimes we worry and procrastinate too much. For nothing, it's a waste of time. We need to delete it. And uh, we want to uh, spend time with people uh, um, but who are benefit us. We learn something. If we spend people just gossiping, then they are not the right people for us. So we delete it. Okay, if we are disorganized, then we create clutter and we can't find important documents. So this is also important. You should put for example, I have a drawer, all financial matters in one drawer, all health service matters in another drawer. So like that, I have uh, each one is allocated. Then I have on my table uh, boxes where I put uh, files and see through files and I tag it, which one is which. So that I every time I put all my lectures, for example, all my presentations, digital one is in one, folder on all, all my presentation uh, synopsis is in, in my filing cabinet in one file it says uh, my lecture notes so this way I, I i don't put it anywhere else so also uh, the wristwatches and mobiles and uh, keys and specs if we don't have a specific place to keep we should uh, put them in a place where i can scan it and it's visible Otherwise, we will lose it. And many people can't find it because they've just put it everywhere. So that's some habit to develop. This is also time costing. And I, I listed the uh, cost of poor time management. So pa partially, if we are poor in time management, then we lose trust of people. If I say to my children, I will be, uh, I'll take you to the park at 5 o'clock and I'm not home even 5.30, that means I lose relationship, they are unhappy, and they don't trust my words. So that kind of thing. So we need to keep time. It also loses my dignity. Uh, and it also can create stress in me and others like that. Okay, benefits is we are productive, we are successful, we have self-dignity, self-respect, self-esteem, self-confidence. And uh, people can trust our words. We have good physical mental health for it. We have a positive outlook on career and business. We improve efficiency and effectiveness. And we have more time for family and community. Okay. I, I told you that uh, a home manager, wife is home manager according to Professor Sarisella, not housewife, but home manager. And uh, this is something we all need to see that a home manager is so organized and so efficient so inspiring and she works for free and priceless and she wakes up first and sleeps last. You will see, a lot of you will remember your mothers doing it, waking up first and sleeps last because waking up means preparing meals, sending children to school, sending husband to work, then take care of household affairs. She does budgeting, shopping, cooking, you know, cooking, she does two, three items together. That means multitasking. So husbands and sons can learn from the mother uh, these things because she's quite good at changing roles and managing all those in a balanced manner so that the home is managed properly. She also keeps her mental, uh, emotional, spiritual, intellectual balance. And it's an inspiring example for all of us. The full-time mothers are not actually free she's more busy than most others. And those who, are, who work and manage home, this is something that they need also to think about giving rest as one sister was saying that she needs to take rest because rest means recharging. That's important. Otherwise, if mobile will not work, if there's no recharge. So this is the case study. So I said that you need to uh, look at your four types of time and uh, if you are sleeping eight hours a, a day, 
And in 60 years of life, you actually sleep 20 hours, 20 years of life in sleep. I met one person uh, when I was working in London uh, um, local government. This person had so many degrees, one line of name, but three lines of degrees, two PhDs. So I said, he's, a, he's an African uh, British. He's from Sierra, Sierra Leone. He has two doctorates. So I said, how do you manage this? He said, I sleep four hours a day. I said, is that four hours enough? He said, for me enough, because I just program my mind and my body uh, follows. So that means we can actually adjust ourselves. If that man can do it, why can't we? Let's look at an example of, I have this chart where 24 hours is divided into 24 hourly slots and the week, complete week is in front of me, as you can see in the slide. So what you do is just record what you actually spend time on. On a Monday, six o'clock, I start the day. Some people, some, uh, some mothers, uh, we will probably start the day with, at six o'clock. Of course, I didn't fix fudger time where fudger time changes in, in UK. So you have the weekly chart where 24 hour slot is given for every single day. And then you actually write down what you do and look at how the time has been spent in a week, in a typical week, and see how personal, social, professional, and organizational time is open, uh, spent. Then you uh, analyze each component and see where you can save time and make better use of time and me be more productive and even plan some rest or family uh, outing, things like that. So this is how, this is the tool you can use. And uh, I've already sent file to brother Yusuf and he will share it with you, inshallah. Some action tips as uh, last is, I need to start with what uh, my life goals are meaning long-term, what am I going to achieve in life? And then sh short-term, what objectives do I have? What objectives are smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and relevant, and timed. So th these are the objectives, they are specific. Goal is general, objective is specific, and then priority is according to priority that we talked about. This is how we can actually be more productive. And the right to-do list, one sister mentioned about to-do list, daily list, this is very, very useful because you don't try to remember everything. There's no need for putting pressure on your mind and on your memory. Just write it. And uh, some people use it on a, a whiteboard, a small whiteboard uh, in bedroom or in the kitchen or anywhere uh, suitable for you. And then to-do list should always top the urgent and important. That goes urgent and important. The child is sick, it's urgent and important. Sickness is urgent and child is in my child, so it's important. So that means I have to do action now. This is uh, quadrant one, okay? And we also need to keep desk, paperwork and telephones tidy so that we don't waste time looking for paper because we don't know where we put it. So let's have the important papers in the important places so we don't lose it. We need to schedule our commitments so that it's quadrant one and quadrant two, urgent and important and uh, not urgent, but important. These two are most important. And according to uh, that, we uh, plan it. And delegate quadrant three that can be delegated to others in the family, in the workplace, in the organization that can be done. Particularly the leaders uh, should uh, share it with everybody. So everybody has something to do. Uh, otherwise, the leader will be what I call, if you don't delegate, you suffocate. Then set a meeting purpose, whether formal meeting or informal meeting. No meeting, in my view, no meeting should last longer than one and a half hours, unless the meeting members, everyone is uh, saying, sharing something, giving speeches, uh, short speeches. Generally, any meeting that you chair should last one hour to one and a half, no more then one needs to recharge. The balancing is dunya and akhira balance, personal and collective balance, family and organization balance, family and work balance, like that. So all those things, there are competing demands. An efficient person will fulfill those demands in order of priority and importance. In order of priority and importance. Those words have been spoken already. Okay, 
Now, last slide, I think. Yes, it is last slide. Long term, medium term, and short term. Long term is five years or more. So we need to, all the things that we have to do, we have to look at long term, five years, 10 years, 15 years, that like that. So medium term is two years to four years. And the short term is six months to 12 months. So each one, long term, you have general targets, general objectives, general goals. In, so goals will be in long term. Objectives can come in medium term. And targets, specific targets will be in short term. So what am I going to do in six to 12 months? So self-development, family progress, religious events, holidays, courses, professional know-how like that. And then for the short term, we need daily, weekly, and monthly. So starting with what we want to do, the end, Ahmad van Donfer, a scholar from Germany, a Muslim revert, uh, who became Muslim maybe something like 45, 50 years ago. And he said, you start with the end and Stephen Covey also said, start with the end in mind. What is your end? And then work through backwards so that you can achieve it. So if I'm going, I'm traveling from here to Manila, then I have to see where I'm, uh, I may be stopping, what I need to do to prepare for it. I need to have visa if necessary. I need to have a ticket. I need to see the time I'm allocating. And if I have any commitment, I reschedule them. And then I have to uh, prepare physically and mentally and practically. I pack my suitcase and take everything. All those things are based on my trip to Manila, arrival there and staying there for a few days. So that means end is the beginning. If I lose the end, then I will be diverted to other things. So when I go to shop, I know what am I going there. But there are other shops that I may go. It's like Fard Sunnah and Nafal. This is what Ahmed Vandanvar said, must do, should do, and can do. Must do is the fard and wajib. Should do is the sunnah, and can do are the nafal. So that's the way we can classify them too. So that's it. Jazakumullah khairan. And I can see two chat messages. Let's see. Okay. Um, if anyone... I will stop share for discussion. Now we have discussion time again. So this is the time and life management because if we manage time, we manage life. So if, if brothers would like to make comments, please go ahead. Who wants to make comment first? Brothers and sisters, of course. There are two sisters from Philippines. Uh, it's good practice. I, I want to follow the example of I will I will follow myself too. The three people from Philippines, you no, know, out of four, three of them put PH as Philippines, and I would like to use it myself in future. Mahmoud Al Azami UK, like um, brother Abu Bakr Ma, Hong Kong, HK. <laughs> so this is good, brother Jamshid. Uh, Sri Lanka CE or whatever is Sri Lanka SL, like that. So it, this would be good. Uh, I learned something from the sisters and uh, uh, brother brother Azhar. Okay, so who wants to go first? Just yes, share uh, your reflection. Yes, brother uh, Yusuf. Thank you, Ustaz Mahmoud. Just an uh, announcement. I, I have shared the um, slide in the PDF form in the chat box, so you can download it uh, now. So it's more convenient for you, if you want. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so some reflections on, you spoke about time, how you manage time. How much do you feel now that you are, you can do it better after uh, I gave you some tools? Brother Abu Bakr Ma, how would you, um, I How think do you... uh, your presentation is very systematic, uh, very comprehensive. Um, I have I haven't started to use your tour, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
But no, you uh, will sell it because you, <laughs> you just only heard now. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But I'll try. I'll try to see. Uh, to, to so was some... it beneficial for you? Yes, I think it gives uh, us uh, some reflection at least. Uh, right. When we do our things, sometimes when we uh, sit in our office, sometimes the student came, sometimes to ask for something, sometimes the office staff come for you to sign something, sometimes right. the te telephone come out and then you want to discuss, and then uh, the principal also asks you to go to the office to some discussion. So sometimes it's... Right. Very uh, when we walk around in the, in the school camp, campsite campus, sometimes we discover something and then it uh, divert our attention. For example, I want to go to somewhere hoping to get some colleagues to get some talk, but I see some students they are playing around. So sometimes it's this uh, distracts yes, a lot. You are vice principal of uh, school yeah. and college, and yeah. how many 600 students? Uh, not that much, around 500. 500. Yeah. So as vice principal, you have to manage time. Otherwise, you mm. can't run. Uh, it's a big role. You are the deputy leader of the school and college. <laughs> so, uh, of course, uh, I mean, you have been uh, uh, vice principal for a long time, right? Yes, yes. So yes. that means you have uh, managed time. You have no way of missing time. But you can marginally improve. Uh, but you have already... Uh, um, done well on ma time management and therefore life management. But what would that's uh, your school and college? But how about family and Islamic Dawah organization that you are involved in? Are you balancing them? And also, how about the Prophet Islam said your body has your uh, right on you? So I think I think I'm okay. I, I think I think <laughs> uh, yesterday I also do some Dawah work. Uh, yes, yeah, also today. Yes. Okay, I think I have uh, um, my wife uh, understand me. Mashallah. That's that. very important, actually. Yes. That's very important. Uh, my wife understands me because I'm so busy, I don't have enough time for her. So, what I do is if I go to uh, intercity travel, uh, I, I take her with me because I'm driving. It's better uh, yeah. that. Both of us together, and and she helps me out. So this is also partly uh, giving her time. And so while driving, we can talk because while at home, for, for every every presentation that I prepare, it takes between eight to ten hours because you have to do research and you have to prioritize, you have to think through, and you have to create ideas. A lot of things uh, came from my mind, so they, they don't come unless you do research. So this way. It takes time. Uh, that means uh, uh, I do maybe six, seven, eight presentations a month. Mm. So just think about the amount of time I have to invest. So this is, alhamdulillah, Allah is a, uh, helping me. So I will ask everybody else. And the last person yeah. to speak about time management and personal time management is Brother Yusuf. I, I would like to know. Uh, Brother Yusuf organized my uh, program in Hong Kong when I came in 2019. And he did it very well, uh, alhamdulillah, very organized man, uh, like you, Brother uh, Abu Bakr Ma. Okay, uh, anybody else, Brother Jamshid, do you want to share something? Uh, uh, any comments on what I have presented? Uh, you have to unmute. Please unmute you your, your mic. Brother Jamshid, yes, okay. Yes, awesome. Actually, sir, uh, before I attending this meeting, I mean, special meeting, it was really, uh, I, I say from my heart, it's just very useful. And, and we really. know the importance of time and we should uh, follow the time management. But we basically don't know how, how this possible, how can uh, uh, list it step by step. That's the problem. Uh, we, we usually <clears throat> uh, talk friends and schools and every time we meet others uh, time management is very important time management is very important but how this process this uh, process how should be organized how we should think the time at, uh, which is the things uh, to give priority and uh, how many time you should allocate for that so this depends on uh, the 
importance of the events and the situation. Yes, so yes, situation to situation, uh, yes. Uh, this all that I learned from your uh, very valuable lecture, actually, I should say that, uh, because the order and uh, the plan, uh, how it should be. But uh, this is what I learned from this meeting, especially. Uh, so hereafter, uh, I think uh, this uh, completely will be different from my uh, earlier time management and the time management after that I'm uh, proposed to do next. Uh, in the coming years. You have given me a lot of rewards. You have given me a lot of, shall we say, encouragement. Alhamdulillah. Yes. Uh, so uh, it is very uh, useful and very, uh, uh, thank, thank you so much for that. Jazakumullah khair. How about uh, the brother next to you? Do you have any uh, comment to make? Uh, he is uh, our chairman of our seeds uh, uh, organization. Mashallah, chairman should say something. Oh, so, uh, that's why that's why I call him. But uh, just uh, see our uh, boy and uh, tell something uh, in front of him. Yes. Okay. Would you like to say something, brother? Oh, yes. Oh, he uh, just uh, introduced himself. Uh, uh, little things. Yeah, that's all. Okay. Okay, brother. So, how do you feel? About the program. Later, uh, join this meeting. <laughs> so you are chairman of the organization. How do you manage your time? You have family, you have work, you are chairman of the Islamic organization. And after that, after you will be Dr. Anwar Wadud. He has said something important in the chat box. So inshallah, uh, if you would like to share uh, how you manage your time, would you like to share? Yes, uh, as uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I will express uh, his story. Uh, he say uh, just uh, all that he says us, I mean our members and other uh, activities uh, involving in our uh, organization, he will always uh, explain that time. Time should be very, uh, uh, people should not be disappointed in any time, in, in anywhere. But the time we gave them and tell something promises, so we should keep uh, very uh, time. We should be very honest and respect uh, people, and should be uh, everything do for in time. There. So yes. if, if there's uh, obstacles, also uh, just uh, tell them. Just wait. Uh, that you, you, we we have to express our real reason, but never uh, disappoint people. But the time, because the time, uh, always. Tell them over the time, uh, you should come in time. Uh, for example, a special meeting. Before uh, last night also, he called immediately. Uh, we have a, a meeting as, uh, at 6.30. So uh, before uh, 6.25, you should be there. Yes, so, very good idea. I just want to emphasize that. Uh, Brother uh, Jamshed said, if the meeting is at 6.30, you should be there five minutes before. That's good time management. Very good. It's also called in time. If you are there at 6.30, it's on time. Yes, but we should be in time because this is an Islamic practice. And Brother Jamshed, you have said something very important is we should be in time and not on time. Because on time we might sleep. In time means you have some five minutes to spare. Very good point. Jazakallah khairan. Uh, Dr. Anwar al -Wadud, if you would like to share some uh, feelings uh, and uh, observations. Uh, uh, I, I have sent you a message, brother. Uh, can you yes, look I've on seen. Yeah. We have to prioritize organizational work, then family. It, you know, sometimes we have our personal work in the school, university. After class, we join with the organizational work, and it takes time. Yes. You know? So the after return back at home, it's, uh, I have found sometimes my kids are sleeping. And again, next week morning we can see each other. So it's sometimes right. you know it's, it's uh, I myself also feeling bad, you know. Uh, it, but it, we have to prioritize organizational it, work as well. Remember, it is so how, dating. How can we balance of it? So you can balance by dating, by explaining to them that you know uh, <laughs> tomorrow I have this uh, thing for the community. 
So uh, I will not be with you, but I will be with you on another uh, time. So give them time. So this way, at least uh, not silently missing them and they don't have explanation. You explain to them and they will understand. Children are good at it. You, the father saying, you know, I have to give time to the community and they, this is serving Allah and serving the people for our pleasure of Allah. And because you have, you will miss me and because you accept it, you respect it, you get reward for it too. And if you explain and encourage them and say, I'm going to be spending time with you. Uh, let's say, say tomorrow, I will spend one hour with you. See, give them some hope and give them explanation. This way you can balance it out because they need to feel good that father thinks about them. See? So sometimes, yes, you are right for organizational duty. Like I'm away, but I, I'm a retired person. I'm away, but whenever I'm away, uh, when before I, I uh, would explain to children. Also uh, to the children, this is another angle. Uh, the relationship is a vital issue. The angle is that if you, if you tell them, do it, don't stop there. Say, do it because this is the beneficial for you. Mm. Explain the reasons for why, why you're saying do it. And if you say, don't do it, explain the reasons. What are the costs involved? What are the, uh, what is bad, bad about it? So, uh, for example, I said to my children, when they were going to primary school, I said, you will find in the dining hall, they will put the fork on the left and the knife on the right. You switch it over so you can eat with the right because the left hand is used by shaitan to eat and drink. So eating and drinking for Muslims is not allowed by left hand because of that reason. So they, they were only a few of the Muslim children who were doing it. Because I explained them before, so they just go there and automatically change over. Uh, so this is knife and fork. They put it on the left because they cut with the right hand and eat with the left. But they learn to do the opposite way. So this is how you can actually treat the children and keep them on and uh, explain. If you're not there, don't be silent because the children will miss, feel bad about it. If you explain, they will not feel bad and they will actually feel good that father gave us importance and father explained to us why he could not be with us today or tonight. See? Brother Ahmed Lubis, yes, would you like uh, to say? Yes. Yeah. Um, thank, thank, you. Allah. Yes. thank you so much, yeah. brother, for your... Uh, thank you. Yeah. Professor yeah. Lubis actually is yeah. the rector of a university in Indonesia. He must be a very Master. busy man. <laughs> so he, he still spare his time to join us. We are very yeah. grateful for his support. Yeah, thank you I, for the I, I'm honored, Brother Ahmed. It must yeah. be Professor Dr. Ahmed Lubis. You are Vice Chancellor of the University. MashaAllah. It's a great, great pleasure and be uh, our privilege to have you here. Yeah. You have been educating thousands of students. Educate yeah. something for us. Yeah, I think this is the really good, uh, excellent materials. Yeah, we have done it in our lives, uh, some of it, but you make it a very wider horizon, uh, uh, complete perspective. I think this is really important uh, if we share it to the uh, young people uh, because uh, yeah. they know this stuff from the, the beginning. I think this is really, uh, really good. Uh, I just wonder. You can organize how... one. You can organize one and uh, Brother Yusuf can uh, yeah, yeah, coordinate. I, think... I will be happy yeah. to do for your students. Yeah, I, I think I will share the, the materials to the... the, uh, the... I can make the pres same presentation yeah. to your students. Okay. Yeah, thanks very much for this uh, offering. Uh, but this is very good. I'd like to share it to my kid also. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, thank you very much. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. And it's, uh, how do you manage time being uh, such a big man in Indonesian university? How do you manage yeah. time? Yeah, you have to, yeah, to-do list is really uh, helpful, yeah, to-do list. Uh, and then, uh, uh, of course, uh, we, because uh, we work uh, in a, beside the mosque so uh, every zuhur and every asr uh, we should be in the, <laughs> in the mosque uh, so i think this is uh, really important uh, what uh, who uh, which brother uh, uh, mentioned about the related to the prayer time i, I think this is really important i think the students also 
uh, follow that. Uh, yeah, uh, but overall, uh, this is really uh, good. Not just for the student, but this is for the, the students, uh, for the professionals, for any anybody. I think this is really Absolutely. good material. Yeah. Would you Thank like you to put much. your telephone number uh, uh -huh. so I can connect with you? And I'm giving my number here. Yeah, yeah. Inshallah, I can, I can provide to you the contact of uh, Professor Lupi. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Then I can ask you also, uh, message you, uh, his, his number. Yeah, yeah, I have given my number, WhatsApp number. Okay. Uh, okay. Sorry, it's too, it has gone to uh, uh, only. I, I write, I read down. What's yeah. your number? What is your number, Mr. Uh, uh, I'm giving. Yeah. Oh, In the chat box. In the chat box. Okay, chat box. Okay, all right. Yes, okay, okay. Uh, I've given okay. my number for everyone, so yeah, yeah. you can all note okay. it down and yeah, yeah. have direct connection. I will be very happy because uh, I have I've done actually, uh, Professor Ahmed Lubis, uh, for your information. Uh, yeah. There are four Islamic universities in eastern region of Africa: one in Somalia, one mm -hmm. in Kenya, one in Tanzania, one in Uganda. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I did because it is triple uh, IT. So Triple IT uh, organized it and asked me. So I yeah, did yeah. a program for them uh, over three days, half day mm -hmm. each day, uh, for the teachers. I did one mm. for the teachers uh, of those Islamic universities. There is Umma University in Kenya, yeah. um, Muslim University of Morogoro in Tanzania, then Islamic University in Uganda, and mm. I don't remember the name of the Somali Islamic University. So those four, and it would be my pleasure um to to contribute because i need i need a uh, reward in akhirah so yeah, you can facilitate Inshallah. but the yusuf yeah. uh, but the yusuf is has been uh, i mean he i would say in time management times I, i'm going to ask him but i can say every time program he reminds me before i remind him oh, no, i have no, not no, no. Uh, you have the book you have that, the that book. is my duty that is my duty for your information, actually, That's Professor true. Lubis is the chief IT representative for Indonesia. So, so he's he's actually in charge of taking care of a big oh, group the materials. of universities <laughs> in Indonesia. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. I would be actually. I've been to Hong I would love to. Are you in Jakarta? Yeah, I'm in Jakarta. Yeah. I, oh, just, I would love to. I've not been to Indonesia. Okay. <laughs> I would love to uh, visit Jakarta and uh, and spend time uh, with students. And I'm more as a trainer, not just speaker. Yeah, I yeah. engage people very much and give them workshop okay. and individual exercise, group exercise like that. But this is based on your observation, yeah? The material that you have uh, given to us uh, based yes. on the... Do you have the book? Yeah. Do you have a book for this? Have you... I, I, sh I should. Uh, okay, I okay. have... Maybe I have I have notes on 113 okay. or okay. 120 topics. Okay. I have notes, but presentations I have 50. All right. Uh, on different topics, I will send you. Um, okay. uh, if you connect with me in my number, I will yeah, send yeah. you some. This is your WhatsApp number, sir. Yeah? Yes, it's my WhatsApp okay. number. Two nine two nine. Okay. Actually, Ustad Mamun, before his retirement. He was a professional trainer for Islam in the Islamic Bank, Development Bank. Yeah, okay. I was in Islamic yeah, Development for, Bank. Yeah, for training for the students years. and so no on. No wonder, no wonder. <laughs> very, very <laughs> and nice. And before then, I was in 15 years in local government in Manchester and London. Okay. Uh, so total 35 years of community development uh, experience, uh, organizing training, uh, and many other things. I'm an expert by the grace of Allah. And uh, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, and I have been a dawah worker for 54 years. Yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. 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 So let's see if anybody else has uh, Sister Arnalin and uh, I can see Sheikh Alauddin Falahi, Nepalese brother. He's a scholar. Uh, Sheikh Alauddin Falahi, would you like to say something? How you manage time? He's in Brunei doing PhD. 
Oh, Where are you, Sheikh Alauddin Salahi? Yeah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you can open the camera, everybody can see. <laughs> so it's managing time. How do you manage time? And Brother Sheikh Alauddin Falahi has also written translation of uh, Quran in Nepalese language. And it has been published. Hmm. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. 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 So, um, would you like to share some wisdom, please? And uh, will... Today, just I want to benefit, take benefit from you, your brother. Alhamdulillah. Uh, um, have you managed to uh, join when I was presenting or uh, after? Maybe after. Okay, after. So, uh, I will send you the presentation. There is one uh, said Mr. Uh, and we haven't had the wisdom from, is it brother or sister? I don't know. MR. Is it Mr. or MR initials? Okay. Uh, nothing, brother. Anwar, um, you opened your mic. Do you want to say something? No, no, brother. No, brother. Just I am listening. Okay. okay. Uh, I would like. I would like. Uh, I think Mr. Amar, okay. he was something. Uh, he, yeah, he raised his hand. Yeah, please. If unmute you are your brother, mic. Please uh, unmute and speak. Yes, brother. Okay. Mr. Mr. Okay. Okay, having difficulty. Okay. Okay. No problem. Like, brother Yusuf, yourself, you are uh, you are such a good organizer. I have I have personal experience like brother Abu Bakr, a very organized man. So if you would like to say how you uh, manage your time, so we can learn something from you. My teacher, Ustad Mamun, you make me shy. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Uh, we really are, I would like to thank uh, Ustad Mamun for his comprehensive and thought provoking uh, sharing. Really, uh, it is very thought provoking. And there are many items that uh, we can make use of, and especially the tools that he provided. And um, I, I think uh, especially, uh, usually actually, I did, not, I did not do much for time management other than making use of to-do list. Uh, I used to have a to-do list every day in the morning. And then before you leave your office, you just check whether all the important um, items have been uh, completed. And after retirement, of course, we slow down and also, um, before retirement, you can delegate. But uh, after retirement, you have to delegate to your own self, right? <laughs> Very nice. Yes. Yes, I like that. Delegate yeah, to yourself. Yeah, uh, then, then you have to take do, care of. And therefore, be, uh, sure. because of the limited yeah. time and uh, resources, then you really have to think of what, what are the priorities you, you have to do, right? And also, right. alhamdulillah, uh, really, um, uh, throughout my working career, most of my time uh, are, are involved with either in the school work or in voluntary work. And alhamdulillah, uh, uh, I have a very understanding wife and tolerant to my um, just... Um, busy outside roles. Yeah, busy outside. Really, the, uh, uh, my three children were just raised up and educated by her. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. It also uh, means your wife is getting a lot of reward for you doing inshallah. it and she accepting it. May, may, Allah, may Allah grant her all, all the best. Amen. Amen. Uh, and, and now after retirement, of course, you know, I, I have no excuse to, 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 to just uh, has, has to share the responsibility of uh, taking care of the grandchildren. Although I did not take much work in uh, taking, taking care of the care children, of right? Playing with them, not taking <laughs> care of playing with them. Yes, at least. Um, uh, anyhow, uh, yeah, alhamdulillah, this is also a uh, blessing. 
This is you also see, a blessing of Allah. I say you are retired, not tired. Oh, so alhamdulillah. You are still alhamdulillah. And uh, uh, yeah. M R is his sister. I, yeah. I think she wants to say something. Please. Go ahead, sister. Sister, you raised hand. Go ahead. Please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. I'm from Nepal. I'm Jamila Maryam. I'm Dai. Dai and trainer of Hodzaz. I'm doing work in Muslim and non-Muslim. Oh, mashallah. Hundred, uh, hundred women accept Islam. Alhamdulillah. Uh, you, have, you have done extremely well, better than uh, me. Mashallah. May Allah reward you. Yeah. Yes? I and have to, four children. I'm... How do you manage time? Uh, sometimes I'm doing work in kitchen also and uh, preaching, uh, teaching in women also. And sometimes I'm uh, traveling and uh, giving dawah uh, on other people when I'm sitting in bus and uh, traveling like that. And uh, sometimes uh, we manage, I have also four children and I'm doing all work in home and uh, after then, uh, 15, 20 and 50 days uh, uh, all Hujjaz when they are going to uh, Makkah I am trying to give them train, training also alone Masha nobody Allah, is Masha helping Allah. me nobody is what helping me I, uh, my husband is also they are allowed he is also oh, alone, oh. alone with me he is not ah, you are Sheikh allowed this he is not Why? helping me I'm being alone. <laughs> okay. Okay, Sheikh Fala, Aladdin Falahi, you heard. You have to help your wife. Inshallah. No, no, no. Wonderful. No, no. Mashallah, mashallah. Okay, it's really something that uh, I learned from you that you, you are doing so much more than me. Mashallah. I'm really grateful for your comments. And inshallah, uh, and it, it, is, it is something that I found uh, all your comments inspiring. And I, I want to return uh, to Brother Yusuf for conclusion. I will, conclusion. Uh, I will help her, inshallah. Okay, Bye -bye. now the husband speaks. Husband, uh, yeah, husband. Brother, they, he is staying in the Philippines for six years. He didn't come to Nepal. Why? This okay. is my question. Okay, inshallah, I will deal with it separately. I know Sheikh Alauddin Falahi. I have to deal with him and I have to Catch him on your behalf, sister. Inshallah. <laughs> if he will okay. help me, I will uh, do work more than more. But Inshallah. 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 He, sometimes he prays only. He tell me okay. do work, Inshallah. do work, do work. Okay. Inshallah, I will. Uh, it's like uh, the Sahaba uh, coming to Prophet Islam and saying. And my husband doesn't give me time. So, inshallah, uh, between me and Brother Yusuf, I know, I know Brother Sheikh Alauddin Falahi very well uh, personally. So, inshallah, I will uh, talk to him. So, Brother Yusuf, you, uh, to close uh, for closing remarks. Okay. Thank you so much, really. Uh, thank you, uh, Ustad Mamun, for giving such a comprehensive and thought provoking uh, presentation. I think all of us must have benefited from it. And it is really a lifelong uh, 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 worth um, information uh, that we have to reflect how we make use of our time and how we manage our time. And uh, I also would like to thank all the participants joining us, uh, especially uh, Professor Ahmed Lubis and yeah. and Brother James Shirt and uh, Dr. Uh, Anwar uh, what, what do is it? And what do? Um, yeah, and Brother Abu Bakr and uh, others, uh, brothers and sisters who join us. Really, uh, I hope you can spread the message so that more people can participate in our monthly uh, um, webinar which is really uh, very uh, uh, fruitful. And during this time, uh, we are in different countries 
and what's that? My moon is in UK in the morning, and in Hong Kong we are in the afternoon, and you know. But we we can have a function, and uh, Professor Lubis is in, in Indonesia, and then we, we can we can share and learn from each other. Really, Allah has blessed us with such kind of tools which we must make use of. Alhamdulillah. So I uh, hope that uh, all of us will be uh, will, uh, will uh, be rewarded for spending our time sharing our, our knowledge as well as learning from our learned ustaz. So, so we should uh, end this meeting by dua. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Wala asr. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wala asr. Inna al-insana lafikus. Inna madina amanu wa aminu s-sarihat. Wa tawasaw bihak. Wa tawasaw bihak. Thank you so much for joining us. And see you again next time. Wa binnahi tawfiq wa hidayah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Thank you. Thank you. Brother, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes he's increasing me. Please. He's increasing. He's uh, helping. Yeah. Little, oh. little. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Peace. Join, so join us next time. Next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam.